So as we have discussed, Q is a data structure which is called as FIFO or LILO. Okay, this is first in first out and last in last out. Okay, and there are two implementations of queues. One is array implementation, and second one is linked list implementation. Right, and I consider that linked list implementation is much simpler as compared to array implementation. We'll see what are the right now we have to see what are the complexities which are involved in array implementation. Okay, now let us suppose you are having some array like this. So this is your array. and you are going to implement stacks here okay right and the index locations are 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 and this array is called as q okay and in this array you are going to insert some data uh, here right whatever you are going to insert data is from th this direction right and you will be removing data from this direction right for example if i insert a then a will be inserted here if i insert b then b will be inserted here if i insert c then c will be inserted here if i insert d then d will be inserted here if i insert e then e will be inserted here okay and we need to take care of two things what is the first thing is where the first data is and the second thing is where the last data is okay that means we are going to use two more variables first variable will be the variable head okay or you can also use some other name because we have used head in case of uh, linked list so what we can do is we can use some other uh, variable which is for example top of q t o q okay and then we can also use one more variable which will be called as the tail okay or we can use the variable head or head and tail because that is more simple to understand okay head is going to point to the initial front uh, data of the uh, of this q and tail is going to point to the last data of the q okay so here in this case head is currently pointing to 0 because the front data is present at the 0th location and the tail is pointing to 4 because, uh, because the last data present at the 4th location you can even make a program where tail is pointing to the 5th this 5 location okay uh, that is tail is going to point to the next location where the data is need, needs to be inserted okay and then whenever we are going to pop some data or whenever you are going to dq some data okay dq means you are taking out the data and you are going to return the data okay so there are two operations one is first operation is nq and second operation is dq okay so what is this nq operation nq operation is whenever you are going to insert some data into the queue right and dq operation is whenever you are going to take some data out of the queue correct so here head is pointing to 0 and tail is pointing to 4 now let us suppose i have uh, dequeued some data right i have dequeued this uh, i have performed this dequeue operation in that case this 4 will be deleted from here that means this 4 will be removed from the queue and this 4 will be returned okay so now head is pointed to the location 1 correct now let us suppose i have performed one more dq operation so if i perform one more dq operation that means this b will be deleted from here and help head will be pointing to the next location okay now let us suppose after this dq operation i have performed an nq operation and in, in that nq operation i have inserted f here okay so that means tail will be pointing to the location 5 now after this nq operation i perform one more dq operation that means this 2 will be removed from here okay and the head will be pointing to the location 3 now if i perform one more dq operation that means this d will be removed from here and head will be pointing to the location 4 now if i perform one more dq operation here that means this 4 will be uh, this uh, e will be removed and head will be point to the 5 okay now in this case you can see head and tail both are pointing to the same location right now let us assume that we have removed this data also we have removed 6 also right so even if we remove 6 from this location in that case head will be pointing to the uh, next location but the problem is now if we want to insert some data what happened in that case right because if you want to insert some data head is pointing to the location 5 and tail is also pointing to the location 5 and this location 5 is suggesting that when tail is pointing to the last index location it is suggesting that q is already full because we cannot insert any data into the after this queue right and all but all this data spaces are practically empty 
right? All these spaces are practically empty, and we want to insert some data into the queue. So what happens in this case, right? We will, will not be able to insert any data, right? Now the, your issue is, your problem is you have to solve this issue. You have to solve the issue that even if uh, you are decreasing or increasing head in that you are uh, enqueuing or dequeuing, that in that case this condition should not arrive. Okay, so how will you solve this issue? Right. So there are two methods to solve this issue. First is by shifting data, and second is by making a circular queue. Right. So first is by shifting data, and second is by making a circular queue. And we will be seeing what are circular queues and what is shifting this data. Okay. Now let us assume head is pointing to zero. And tail is tail is also pointing to zero. Okay, that means head is always going to point to the location where the data which can be dequeued will be inserted. Okay, so let us suppose I have inserted data four, right? That means I enqueued four, and then I enqueued five, then I enqueued six, right? Now if I dequeue this four, that means this four will be removed from this location, right? And I should make head point to the next location, but that is not efficient because I have seen what we have seen. What are the what is the issue with that? So what we are going to do is in the shifting operation, we are going to shift all the data to one location, first location. We are going to shift this data, then we are going to shift whatever the data is present. So after shifting, this five will come to this location. So what will happen is after shifting, this five will come to this location and six will come to this location. Now let us suppose I insert one more data that is seven and then I insert one more data which is eight. Now if I again uh, perform a DQ operation, that means this five will be removed from here and all this data will be shifted to the next location. Okay. Now imagine whenever you are removing some data, in that case you have to shift all the data present in the array. Right now, do you consider this operation as efficient? Right, what is an efficient operation? So, efficient operation will be somewhere where you have to do least effort. Right, you can you have to perform as less work as possible and make this thing uh, completely valid. Okay, so if we shift the data, then this is a not a very uh, good operation which I do not actually consider. So, if for example you are having Ten uh, ten index n minus one index locations into your queue, then that means you have to shift n data whenever you are performing this operation. And if the queue is very big, then this operation will be a headache to your program. Okay, so that is why we do not use shifting of the data. So what we use is we use circular queue. Okay, so what are circular queues? Let us see what are circular queues. For example, we are having this array. Okay, and this array is representing a queue. So it is index locations are zero, one, two, three, four, right? And this array is representing a queue. And here we are having two uh, pointers, or you can say two variables, head and tail. Okay. So initially head is pointing to the location minus one, and tail is pointing to the location zero. So what we are going to do is tail is pointing to the location where the next data will be inserted. So where the next Data will be inserted. Okay, and then head is pointed to the location where the front data is. That means which data uh, we need to remove whenever we are going DQ operation. Now let us suppose I N I perform an NQ operation here, and in this NQ operation I insert a data which is A, right? That means this A will be inserted at this location. That means head will be pointing to zero now. Now, if if I insert one more NQ operation, and in this NQ operation I insert B, that means this B will be inserted here, and head will be again pointing to this location, and tail will be pointing. Actually, in the previous case also I should increment tail. So after, in the previous case, tail was incremented to zero uh, to one, and then in, after this insertion, tail was incremented to two. Okay. Now let us suppose if I perform one Q NQ one more NQ operation, and if I insert D, that means Uh, tail here we are going to insert D and then we are going to implement this tail, right? And then I perform one more NQ operation, and I insert F. That means F will be inserted here and the tail will be implemented to four. Now if I perform one more NQ operation, and in that case, uh, if if I insert Z, okay, or Z. So Z will be inserted here and tail will be in incremented to five. So when tail is incremented to five and head is zero. 
right in that case we can say that this array is completely full okay now what if i perform a dq operation okay so if i perform a dq operation that means this 4 will be removed from here and the head will be pointed to the location 1 and then i perform one more dq operation that means this b will be removed here from here and head will be pointed to the location 2 and then i perform one more nq operation right in that case what we have to do is we have to insert the next data at this location right we have to insert the next data at this location how will you insert the next data at this location this is uh, so that is the concept of circular queue that is uh, if this location is completely full and you are already having the space at the front then you can start inserting the data from this location and head will point to the location where the next data is present and tail is pointed to, to, to the location where the uh, next data will be inserted head is pointed to the location where the uh, next data which can be dequeued and tail is pointed to the location where the next data can be inserted okay now how will you go to this location so one thing is the best way is if i have some value of tail then what i do is tail mod size of queue okay so for example here if tail is uh, having the value 5 for if i do 5 mod 5 because the size of this queue is 5 so i'm going to get 0 right that means uh, we are obtain is pointing to this, this location and we can insert the new data here so let us uh, insert uh, g here okay and then the value of tail will be increased to 6 now if i make uh, tail mod size so in this case also what i'm going to get is 6 mod 5 is going to return us 1 that means we can insert new data uh h is here at this location okay so if you logical see logically see this complete diagram this complete diagram will look something like this that it is a circular queue okay so and it is having some index location so if this is index location 0 this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so this is how you can diagrammatically represent a circular queue okay that means if you are starting to insert the data from this location then you can go all the way around and then if this space is empty then you can always insert the new data at this location okay so this is a circular queue right now the problem is now the challenge is challenge is how you are going to implement this queue so what i generally do is whenever i take classroom sessions in that case i ask students to write uh, this program for queue because this itself is a challenge okay so here also um, what one thing i can do is i can always give you the solution whatever you prefer so the best thing which i can do is i can give you the program already written program to implement this queue and then you can always uh, ask me the solutions right or you can write the program by your own okay so let me uh, just give you some hints how to write a program to implement the queue using an array Now let's suppose we are having this array. Index locations are zero, one, two, three, four, and five, and this is a queue. Okay, and then uh, if in the nq function, so in the nq function, what you are going to take is you are going to take the data which needs to be inserted. So let us suppose the data is int data. Okay, and then you have to take two more variables, which is the head variable and second one is the tail variable. So Take some head variable. So, for example, int head and tail. Okay, and you can make head initially point to the location minus one. Head is equal to minus one. So, because head is minus one, you just have to make these two variables as global variables. Uh, because whenever you are going to call this nq and dq operation, so their global values will be called. So, let us suppose we are having this global variable int head is equal to minus one, comma uh, tail is equal to zero okay and then in the nq operation we can just use this head and tail correct so what we are going to do is so uh, if head is equal to minus 1 in that case insert the data right that means your nq is completely empty then insert the data here and then increment the tail else what you are going to do is you have to see what is the value of tail and then you have to make sure that you are going to insert the data at the location where tail mod n where n is the size of the queue 
okay so if this is the n is the size of the queue then you can always uh, find out the next location where uh, it should be inserted and we have to check whether uh, the, the next that location which is pointed by tail is empty or not okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go give you this little assignment and if you face problem then i can make one more video for this okay and i'll, I'll i'm going to give you the solution in, in a pdf format right